It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the show. With me in the KFG studios, my business partner and one of our certified financial planners, Kevin Corhorn, between us, special guest, insurance expert, Alicia Boehner. Yeah, home and auto insurance is a fairly complicated subject, and the easiest piece to understand is price. But the truth is, is that coverage is much more important than price. But still, there are things that you can be doing to ensure you get the best price on your home and auto insurance. Yes, we're going to talk about those and more coming up on today's episode. That's right. And today is actually a special episode sponsored by Indiana Farmers Insurance. Thank you so much for sponsoring the content of the Wise Money Show. If you have a question, reach out to us. You can do so a couple different ways. Call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. All over social media, wherever you do that. Not Snapchat, though. (laughs) Instagram and Facebook, Twitter, all that sort of stuff. Just search the Wise Money Show, YouTube, of course. So you can find us there. You can submit questions there. You can like that content, follow us there. And then online, wisemoneyradio.com. The blog's right there as well, wisemoneyblog.com. And you can submit questions there on the right as well. So, okay, we are happy to have one of our great insurance advisors from the team at KFG here with us in the KFG studios, Alicia Boehner. Thanks for being with us again. Alicia has been on oh, a few times a year. Yeah. And now we're, we're working with Indiana Farmers. They've been a great company and partner with us um, to have more regular uh, content about home and auto insurance. And the very first thing that I thought of, actually it was spurred off of an idea that Alicia had shared with me. Well, geez, we need to talk about what everyone focuses on with home and auto insurance, and that's price. However... Price, like Kevin mentioned, cannot be and should not be your your sole way of deciding what coverage or, or what company you go with, what insurance you go with. It first needs to start with coverage, mm-hmm. right? That's right. So, Kevin, Alicia, how would you put that in perspective? That coverage is more important than price. Well, I would say one of the main tenets of risk is don't risk a lot for a little. So when you save money on your insurance annually, that's great. But if that results in a claim that isn't paid or a loss of hundreds of thousands of dollars for medical payments because you didn't have the right bodily injury coverage, then you've risked a lot of money Mm -hmm. by saving just a little. And that's really not a win for you in the end. Yeah, I my philosophy on risk is to transfer as much as you can. And I've, I've never gotten great joy from writing the check for the insurance premium, but I look at what is protected and how much you can protect, and that's where it makes sense, especially when you look at the six areas of financial planning. Protection planning is one of those six areas, and you want to look at what risks are you facing, which risks do you choose to live with, So if something happens, I'll live with the risk. And which risks do I transfer? And typically the transfer of risk involves I'm going to uh, write a check to an insurance company. And so for a promise and a piece of paper, they tell you that they will cover the things that are covered in your policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you just, I mean, you left off right there. What's covered in your policy is most important. And you need to make sure, working with your certified financial planner and your insurance advisor, that your coverage is consistent with your overall financial life. I think that, you know, for new people coming into to our office looking for financial planning, some financial wisdom, oftentimes it's, are my investments set up the right way? And of course, we help with that. But typically, we see big issues in two areas. One is missed tax opportunities, Mm -hmm. that they're not doing great tax planning. There's usually a lot of fun things that we can find there. But the other that's not as fun is to look and say, okay, well, here's what your entire financial life looks like. And then here's how your insurance is set up. And they're not in alignment here. 
And so you need to be working with your certified financial planner and your insurance advisor to make sure those are in harmony. So after coverage, price, you definitely want to make sure you're not paying too much for the right insurance, right? And so price is a component. It just shouldn't be the driving factor, okay? One of the interesting things, though, about price is you actually have a lot of influence over it. And we often don't <laughs> recognize that because we want to point the finger at someone else and say, oh, this, in, this company is charging me too much, so let me switch to another company. Well, I figured let's talk about the top four ways that you can influence your price and make sure you're paying the best rate possible for the right coverage, right? It's not, it, we're not avoiding the right coverage. Let's get the right coverage and then pay the best rate possible. There are things that you can be doing. We've come up with our top four, and then we'll put Alicia on the hot seat, see if she's got any other honorable mention. So the first thing that you can do to make sure you're getting the best rate possible is to have a great credit score. Alicia, talk to us about why that's important. Okay, so first of all, credit score and insurance score are not the same thing. So I want to make sure that everyone understands that your credit score is not your insurance score. When we run what the company uses, that's called an insurance score. It is based on similar factors, but the truth of the matter is each company weights things differently. So number of revolving accounts, balances on revolving accounts, payment history, have you been paying on time? All of those things will come into play, and each company will look at statistically what they think is offering a better um, loss ratio for them, and they'll weight those factors differently. So we're looking at an insurance score, and that's what we want to kind of focus on improving. So an insurance score includes issues that would impact someone's credit score? Is you that what I hear it. you saying? Yep. yep. So people don't, most folks may not know that your credit score influences what you pay for insurance. Yes. And so for the man on the street out there saying, why in the world would what I pay for my insurance be influenced by my credit score? What's, what's the answer for that? Well, the answer for that is they have actuaries that glean scores and scores of data to say what type of person is having losses and what types of losses are they having? Mm -hmm. And then they will find patterns those patterns could be based upon the age of the driver. Those patterns could be based upon payment history or credit factors. And a lot of the patterns they have found do correlate to credit history or payment history. Oh, you're too nice. I, so, okay. <laughs> so, so I think what you just said is individuals that tend to have poor credit tend to have more accidents. Yes. Or right. poor driving history. Poor driving. See, you just stop being so nice, Alicia. <laughs> we just tell we tell her how it is on the Wise Money Show, and so you know that that's not universal. So if you're listening right now, thinking, "Yeah, I, I'm working on repairing my credit," um, you know, did did you guys just call me a bad driver? No, 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 no. <laughs> but statistically, there's a whole bunch of nerds far nerdier than us that are looking at big, big data mm -hmm. to say, "Well, is there a correlation between driving record and?" credit worthiness mm -hmm. and they found one and so insurance companies latched onto that and if your credit's not that great they equate that into an insurance score yep. then you're going to pay more yep. so i mean this is crazy but you want to pay less you want to get a better rate on your auto insurance get your credit score in order and that's not just auto but it's home all of your insurance because again statistically with poor credit you are statistically a greater risk for the insurance company and they transfer that risk to you. You pay for that. So if you say, hey, I want to pay less, that's where you're working on um, improving your credit score. And are we going to talk about any quick tips for... Let's do it. Okay. So if you if you are young, uh, it, it's important to establish credit. I think the simplest and easiest thing that I've helped my own youngsters do is set up a credit card Put a basic thing that they might, a recurring payment, such as your um, cell phone bill on that. And then I tell them, connect your, your credit card to your bank so that it gets paid off uh, on a monthly basis. Don't ever, ever, ever put more on your credit card than you have money in the bank to pay it off. So don't think, hey, I can, 
I'm borrowing money here. Mm-hmm. That's right. All right, we got a couple other tips to make sure you've got a strong credit score, but then what are the three other things that you can do to make sure you're getting the best rate possible, paying the least for the right coverage for your home and auto insurance? We've got that and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. So, so do we want to Yeah, you hit, get a couple hit the rest of them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, with I'm trying to see your writing here. Within discounts, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm assuming you've got some notes here, but the thing that I've seen is the folks that are most price conscious, I, and this is strange, but um, will have their autos with one company and house with, an other, with another. So they're so price conscious that they're looking for the best deal, the best deal for each of those. When in fact, the best deal might just be putting them together to get discounts, right? It, I'd say we find probably eighty to ninety percent of the time that's true. Yeah, there, those are just the off ones, but yeah. And then I, I was, kinda... I had that multi policy discounts. Yep. Yep. Okay. Individualized rating was one I thought we'd hit because that's a newer one that. I don't know what that is. People probably aren't even aware of, Mike. I don't even know. <laughs> the other thing that I thought of with maximizing discounts is the uh, the um, b- the big brother in your car. That's individualized rating. Hey, see? There you go. Stop using these fancy terms, Alicia. Confuse the rest big of us. Is just watching. say big just say big brother and I got gotcha. you. We've we've confused Lindsay. She's so confused. <laughs> uh, we'll explain it. You will need to Yes, I I noticed that too. I was having a hard time. YouTubers, uh, Alicia is a is a singer. Are you still? Do you sing in uh, church choir or no? Not Actually, right I am doing soundboard more than singing right now because that's where the need was. She's a retired yeah, uh, singer sorry. at her church, and um, dude, that is perfect. I, I to say, hey, I'm a singer that runs a soundboard. Yeah. <laughs> That could be you, Kevin. I know. That, well, that, uh, that's, the only, that's the only way I would ever get ca- categorized as a singer is to say, he's the singer that runs the songboard. What I'm hearing you say is maybe they intentionally outgrew me on the they didn't, team. They didn't know how to tell you. They didn't, yeah. didn't want to tell me I was off key. Mm-hmm. You're such a good singer. We've got a, we've got a really special role for you yeah. to play. Our best singers. Turn everyone yeah. else's <laughs> mic up louder <laughs> and yours uh, down. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. What things can you do that are in your control to make sure you pay the best rate, and I'm saying the cheapest cost for your home and auto insurance? Yes, it's, it's a lot of it's in your control. We're telling you what to do to make that possible on today's show. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn. Between us, insurance advisor Alicia Boehner. Uh, she's one of our great insurance advisors on the KFG teams. Uh, this is a special episode of the Wise Money Show, so I want to say thank you to the Indiana Farmers Insurance for sponsoring the show today. Thank you very much. Also want to say thanks to the loyal sponsors that we have, South Bank Legal and First State Bank, for making the Wise Money Show possible. Thank you very much. And then if you have any questions, we've got some great insurance questions coming up here in just a minute that we're excited to get Alicia's input on. You can reach out to us, 574-222-2000. And call or text us there, 574-222-2000. WiseMoneyRadio.com is how you find us online. And then all over social media, wherever you're at, you'll just search The Wise Money Show. And you can connect with us there so that you receive all future content as we drop it. But then you can also submit questions and comments. And uh, we had... Someone from uh, First State Bank stopped by in the office recently and, uh, and, and dropped off some goodies for the 25th anniversary of, of the Wise Money Show. And, and uh, when they posted on Facebook, someone said, hey, I love listening to those guys on the radio. I was like, hey, thanks. Thank you very much. So, so yes, connect with us that way as well. Okay, so we're talking about there's so much of uh, the average person's home and auto insurance decisions are just price-driven. They're just focused on price. And we tell you that's an enormous mistake. We're not telling you to pay more for insurance. We're saying the most important factor is coverage, though. You've got to get the right coverage for your financial situation. Your certified financial planner is the best one that knows what your overall financial situation is. So they need to work with the expert 
your insurance advisor to make sure you've got the right coverage. After that, I want you to pay the cheapest rate possible, right? So what things are in your control to pay the cheapest rate? First one is make sure you have a good credit score. We were talking about some ways to make sure you've got a good credit score. Yeah, and I, it's it's interesting. I um, talk to Mike and Josh all the time about how our job is to sit across the table from people and explain things that don't make any sense. And people looking to say, well, why would I do this? And we really try to educate, advise, and serve with character and integrity. That's that's the the heart of our mission statement. But it's it's connecting the seemingly unrelated pieces of your financial life together because we're ta- I, you say, well, I thought we were talking about insurance. Why are we talking about credit score? <laughs> because your credit score has a heavy influence on on what you pay for your insurance. Your credit score has a heavy influence on what interest rate you're going to pay if you want to borrow money to buy a car. It has a heavy influence on what you're going to pay if you want to borrow money to buy a house. So your credit score is incredibly important. As a matter of fact, there are some credit scores that if you go to a lender and say, hey, I want to get, I want to borrow money to buy a house, they will say, actually, we can't lend you money with your credit score at that number. So, and and a lot of times this isn't taught, and so you say, well, how, how come I'm responsible for this? No one ever taught me. Well, this is it. part, part of just adulting is that you have, to, you have to figure it out, but that's one of the reasons why we have the Wise Money Radio Show is to raise the financial consciousness of the folks in our area. So the first thing with the, the credit score is establish credit. So if you don't have um, a great credit score, you want to establish credit, and you can you can search that online. But again, as I said, you can get credit for the things that you're already doing, the basic simple things that you're already doing, and set up a system where you're getting credit for that. I just I, I just had this situation where uh, some friends, their child graduated from college and wanted to get their first apartment, and they couldn't get the apartment because they didn't have a credit score. And it was crazy. They couldn't get the apartment because they didn't have the credit score. And dad couldn't sign to for the apartment. And so I told dad, because he had the resources, I said, hey, write a check for a year's worth of rent. And they couldn't do that either. Wow. And I said, well, listen, you're not... <laughs> Obviously, you're not talking to the owner of the apartment complex because I'm sure they'd find a way to make an exception. But credit score makes a a, a big difference. So establish credit. Uh, what can you do? Well, um, and this may seem simple, but pay your bills on time. Keep your balances low. Once a year, part of the ongoing maintenance that you need to do, request a credit report. Yeah. Go to annualcreditreport.com. Request a credit report. My dad's name is Ken Corhorn. My brother's name is Ken Corhorn. My nephew's name is Ken Corhorn. Do you think it's possible that there's a, there's a, a, a bill or an open line of something in the wrong Ken Corhorn? Very easily. But there's also, you know, even more common names than that. And if you have a common name, I would, I would look it up. Yep. Um, and, then, and then the hard work is if there's an inaccuracy, dispute the inaccuracy. Do run the miles, do the hard work to get your life cleaned up financially. All right. So we're talking about what things are in your control to improve your rate and pay the the best rate possible, the cheapest rate possible for the right coverage. Our four tips. First one, get your credit score in line. Make sure you've got a good credit score. The second one is sort of obvious, but not everyone takes advantage of it. Maximize your discounts. Yeah. So maximizing discounts is really important with insurance. Companies offer a slew of discounts that people don't even realize. One of the big ones that's really popular right now is, Mike scolded me for this, individualized <laughs> rating. It's putting, it's plugging Big Brother it's, into your car. Yep, it's basically Big Brother is watching program, so no matter how you want to look at it. But that is something that will save you anywhere from 10% up front up to 20% off of your insurance. Okay, I only saved 12. <laughs> okay, well then, uh, you got some work to do that, Mike. I do, I do. Most of the requirements are three months to six months. So you keep that in your vehicle for three to six months. You can monitor it on an app or on a website to kind of see how you're doing and make sure you maximize that discount there. I, I, I get the idea that, you know, it's a little creepy that it someone's is, watching <laughs> you. But creepy. listen, if you have an iPhone, 
attached to your hip at all time, yeah. they're probably watching you anyway. Yeah. So to plug a device into your car so that they can monitor where you're at, how fast you're going, how quickly you're stopping, how fast you're accelerating oh, for three months. And I, I think mine was three months. Yeah. No problem. And parents. Apple's already doing it. I would suggest parents really consider this for new drivers because yeah. I think this is a great way to kind of enforce good driving behavior up front. And if, you know, it's a privilege. Driving is a privilege. And you have the influence at that time to say, you're doing this. So that's a big one. Another one that's still pretty common. So, and, and can I just stop you right there? So basically, for those people that are, kind of think they heard it but aren't sure what they just heard. There is a device that you can put in your car that the insurance company gives you. It plugs into the dashboard. Plugs into your dashboard, and it feeds data to the insurance company. Yep, that's right. The key things that they look at that they record are time of day you drive, time of day or night that you're driving, mileage, hard braking, rapid acceleration are four of the main factors. So here's what I would do. Here's some here's some free advice. You get that thing, you plug it in, and then take the bus for three months. <laughs> they actually will monitor Come on, that, Mike. Alicia. You can't put it on a vehicle that's just sitting. Okay, you want to make sure. <laughs> the other thing to maximize discounts, I, if you're really, really price conscious, I would tell you again, coverage is more important. But after that, if you're really price conscious, it's 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 typical that you might be looking at one company for auto, one company for home or renters, and you're missing out on a huge discount there. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the discount for multi-policy discount is really big, usually between 40-50% for multi-policy discounts. So there are rare exceptions where we find that splitting an account where the auto is with one carrier and a home is with another is the best deal, and that's okay. But the vast majority of the time, if you actually do the math, it is a better value for you to put the auto and the home together. And often companies will even off offer discounts for life insurance if you have life insurance with them or an umbrella policy. So the more things you have with them, the more likely they are to give you a bigger discount because, again, data, their data shows that you will probably remain a client longer the more policies that you have with them. Any other important discounts to mention here? Yeah, so franchise discounts is a big one. Business owners, if you are a member of a chamber of commerce or some sort of professional association or group, often companies will have a franchise discount you can qualify for. Those are usually 5% off of your premiums, which can be really big for business yeah. business policy owners. Um, for individuals that have auto or home insurance, banks, credit unions, education level, even if you've done some college, companies will give you a discount for that. Cool. Uh, and then driver discounts. So defensive driving courses for young drivers or for senior drivers or motorcycle safety courses. There's all these types of courses you can take that companies will often give you a discount for. We've got a couple more items to hit to make sure that you're paying the best rate for your insurance. We've got that and more coming up here on The Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Okay, so we're gonna do a whole show about credit. Right. This show's about insurance. So. Okay, give me a little credit. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so the so uh, the other discount. Do you do you talk about usage based discounts? Like get a usage based policy. What do you mean? I mean, like mileage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Low mileage discounts are offered. With Safe Cove, I think 7,000 miles or fewer. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how many miles you're driving. Some companies offer it, some don't. We have only maybe two that offer. So we t and are we, we're talking about home as well? Well, for they don't have a usage discount for home, but yeah. But alarm system. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yep. So, and for, so for your car, good, we didn't mention good student. I'll get to that. I, I actually had that mentioned for when you asked about keeping the rates lower for young drivers. Oh, yeah. I had that tag there, but okay. we can hit that. We sh Yeah, we should be able to. Well, I, so I, I don't care you. where it goes, but we just want to make sure we do it because <clears throat> it, people need to know, hey, there's a discount for having good grades, for taking a defensive di driving course. For She mentioned that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, well, you can start with that one before we jump into the, the, the second, the last two. So we're at the beginning of the third segment. We're about one full segment behind, and we're only halfway through the show. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all, it's all good. All right. But you probably don't need to mention your, like, the things you know about the beginning, the second, and third segment, since you just found things. And then yeah. we got to calibrate that. 
So, yeah, I, I agree. Um, okay. And I'm still hearing it. Are you? It's almost, it's worse when it's not talking. That's so strange. Okay. I feel like I'm on Stranger Things. I can hear stuff and you guys can't hear it? Uh -huh. Okay. Nope, we can't hear it. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. Are you doing everything possible to make sure you're paying the best rate for your home and auto insurance? We're giving you our top four things that are in your control that you can do to make sure you're paying the least for the right coverage on your home and auto insurance. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studio is Kevin Corhorn and special guest, insurance advisor, Alicia Boehner. This is a special episode of the Wise Money Show brought to you by Indiana Farmers Insurance. Thank you so much. Also brought to you, as always, by Bethel University Adult and Graduate Studies and Diane Bennett with Inspired Homes, who was on the show last week, giving us an update about the housing market. If you missed any of that, you can catch up on that episode on any, in any others on the YouTube channel or on podcast. All right. We're talking about the things that are in your control. Everyone cares so much about price. I don't want you to pay any more than you're supposed to for your home and auto insurance, but you first need to make sure you get the right coverage in place. And you'll work with your certified financial planner to figure out what coverage you need. And then they'll work with an insurance expert and you to make sure you've got all the details ironed out. But then after that, once you get that, I want you to pay the best price possible. So the second way to make sure you're getting the best price is to make sure you're maximizing all your discounts. There's a couple others that we want to mention, right, Alicia? Yeah, so good student discount is one of the more popular ones. If you have someone that's in school full time, they can get a discount for having good grades. Usually, Does that's... that like last for the rest of your life? So if you got, you know, maybe a 3.5, if you were on a roll, <laughs> are you good with insurance, good student discounts forever? No, they usually oh, make bummer. you update it each semester or trimester. But 3.0? or B average is generally what's required there to get that discount. And then on the homeowner side, alarms. If you have a central station alarm system or one that reports to the police, one that rings at your house, smoke detectors, things like that, you can get a discount for those as well on your home. There's been a lot of uh, technological advances with those home monitoring systems. So even some of the cheap ones that you can buy at Costco, would those yeah. qualify? Yeah, they'll usually qualify for a discount. It might not be as big as one that would report to like a third party or directly to the police, but it would give you a small discount, probably 2%. Yeah. I think when it comes to, to tax planning, a lot of times people will work with a CPA, have someone else prepare their taxes because they just want to know, am I getting all the deductions I'm allowed to get? And this is one other reason why you'd want to have an insurance agent instead of just talking to Flo or the Gecko, is just making sure that you're you're talking to someone who's an expert so they can make sure you're getting all the discounts that you could be eligible for. Yeah, and the other one that Kevin had mentioned was the mileage discount. So there are discounts on auto insurance as well if you drive less. Mm -hmm. With some of our companies, it usually starts around 7,000 miles or fewer. So make sure you're reporting that to your agent so they know how many miles you're actually driving each car. You may not even know, and that's okay, but it might be good to start tracking that if you think that you have a vehicle that you're not driving very many miles on. See if you qualify for that discount. All right. So the, the third tip as a way to make sure you're paying the best rate possible for your home and auto insurance is managing your driving record and I'd also throw in there managing small claims. So yep. Alicia, what, how, what would you say about that? Okay, so first thing I would say is you're technically obligated to report all claims to the insurance company. Make sure you contact your agent anytime you have a claim. That said, your agent is going to work with you to try to figure out whether a small claim needs to be reported to the company or sometimes we can submit it with reporting purposes only so that they know about it, but it's one that you're not intending to file on. Those claims will hurt you, and it will end up costing you more money when your policy renews if you have more losses. Um, other things, auto violations, a lot of people don't even realize how much their auto... Parking tickets? Their driving record, not parking okay. tickets. You can probably get as many of those as you want, actually. <laughs> hey, okay. and just, so, and, and just backing up real quick, in the yeah. spirit of being a jargon-free zone, so when you say a claim, you say we're... You're responsible for reporting all claims to your insurance agent. Yes. 
uh, a claim might mean one thing to me. It might mean a different thing to you. So what does a claim mean to you? It's an incident that happens. So, for instance, you might back into a telephone pole and have a little bit of damage to your vehicle. That technically is a claim in the insurance company's mind. So you need to notify your agent that it happened, even if you don't have intention of filing anything with the company. You need to make sure you're reporting that to your agent to let them know that that did occur. So if you have youthful drivers, get your agent on speed dial. Yeah, (laughs) that is exactly right. But you're talking about then you'll work with your agent to see if it makes sense to actually report that to the insurance company or just pay it out of pocket so that your premium doesn't go up. Right. And you have to be careful about that, too. Anytime another driver is involved, we generally will recommend we do report it to the company because they will make sure that they're getting the proper legal sign off if there's some sort of incident. But yes, the agent will work with the company to figure out whether or not it's something that needs to be paid by yeah. them or whether the client can just pay it out of pocket. And then the one that hurts because you, you feel like, well, it's it's not really in my control, but it sort of is, is is driving record or what did you call it? Um, uh, you know, speeding and tickets, that yeah. sort of stuff. So your, your driving record, a lot of people don't realize how much that can impact. And I think a lot of agents shy away from talking about it, but often I'll run it both ways. I'll say, this is how much you would have been paying had you not had three speeding tickets. And when that is quantified into a dollar amount, suddenly clients are motivated. And that is really beneficial for people to understand how that correlation happens and how much that really translates to in a dollar amount per year. Because I've seen it double someone's premium Mm. who had multiple violations. They ended up having to go to a high-risk company. So a lot of people don't realize there are standard companies and there's high-risk companies. High-risk companies will take people that have had multiple violations, you know, speeding tickets. There are certain types of tickets that are more costly than others. If it's over 20 miles per hour, it's considered an excessive speed, and they will charge more for that. That will move you into a a tier where you may not qualify with a normal or standard insurance company. So you want to try to stay with a standard company that you can get a better rate with, and then you want to keep that accident. Those speeds have to be 15 miles per hour or under. (laughs) There you go, folks. Keep it to 15 or under. (laughs) Yeah, and one thing that most people... uh, may be unaware of but there's something called pre-trial diversion so if you get yeah. if you get a one-off where you get a speeding ticket yep. and that's not your norm what you can do is go through what's called pre-trial diversion where you pay a certain amount and then if you don't get another ticket within the next year or there's a time period then it they will drop it and it never goes on your record yep here are the two places you really never want to get a ticket is um, in a zone. in a construction zone or right outside of where you work because then all your oh, coworkers I drive right by it. And, and oh well I had both of those okay. <laughs> I had both of those happen within zone. just a couple of months of each other. Yeah. And uh, it's not fun. It's so not fun. Here's Take another tip it. that Kevin mentioned, the pre trial diversion. But a lot of people don't know you can actually if you get a speed and it's a twenty mile speed, you can plead not guilty. Go to court and tell the judge, I was speeding, but for insurance purposes, could you reduce that from a 20 to an 18 or 15? And I have seen in cases where they have done that, and I know an individual that did that multiple times. Only if you go to Judge Judy. There's no (laughs) way that happens in real life. Really? It does happen. No, well, this is the thing. So, and what you may not know as well, you think, well, what's the cost of speeding? So there is the, the speeding ticket then what it costs on your insurance. And then if you are able to accrue enough speeding tickets in a certain period of time, you also get to go to the defensive driving yeah. school. Yep. So it, it is, it's, it's just not really worth it. Yeah. And so we, I like to joke about, it. we've all gotten tickets. We've all gotten right. speeding tickets. We've all gotten you know, parking tickets. I mentioned that doesn't really count, but mm-hmm. yeah. But the, the point is if you're, if you're really, really price conscious with your insurance, I don't want any more to go to your insurance company than absolutely has to in order to get the right coverage. If you're really conscious with that, I'd check your speed. I mean, make, make sure that you're not getting any violations. And those hang on for three to five years. 
Most companies will have a five-year, what we call a look back, a history that they'll look at for claims and for violations. Some companies that are generous will say three years. Yeah. But it keep it prevents you from being able to move. So if you don't like the insurance yes. company you're with yep. and you've got a bad driving record, you're probably going to have to wait until those tickets fall off. Mm-hmm. All right. The last thing that is in your control that you can do to make sure you're paying the least amount of insurance or at least amount of cost for your insurance, the last tip, that's coming up. And then a couple really um, current event insurance issues. We've got that and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. All right. Four segment, land on the plane. <coughs> Good. And there, and I have, I'm still noticing the difference between when you're, me? No, Alicia. Me, Alicia. sorry. Yep. You're when looking you... at Mike, but you're talking to me. <laughs> right. No. Uh, so you want to. Okay. Yep. Okay. It's so I, I'd i like to talk about kids away at college. Okay. So let's hit this fourth one. If there's anything else, great. But then, I mean, this is students are back. Well, we're landing the plane? Yeah. Are you? St- oh, my word. So I Because I, I, have, I have two other ones. That's why I was giving you that look about. Sorry. Credit reports. So I have I have <laughs> cuz I have two other ones. Okay. Well, Oop. let's let's hit those. Let's hit this this first one and then those the it, others. Just make sure that okay, so it is drive a car that's cheap to insure. That so just so you know, that's becoming less and less relevant with household rating. Most companies are household rating where you spread the driver out all the drivers out among all the cars. I have that noted, but that's becoming less and less relevant. Well, if you're it still is for rare carriers that do in the, like per assignment, but I know. But if you're if your child's turning sixteen, and you get them a car that's expensive to insure, versus a car that's cheap to insure, it, if I have an expensive car to insure, even if it's spread out among the household, it, yeah. The, the I mean, if I increase the average, yeah, I pay more than if I right decrease the average. Yeah. So that is one thing, and then the other thing that. It needs to probably need to make a big deal about is you should shop, right? You because if because if you're working with a company that all they have to offer you is their company, or if you're working with a company and they tell you they're independent and um, they independently only sell one company that's you know one of the Great Lakes in Michigan, um, they're not independent, so. Yeah. So if, if this company doesn't have an appetite for this type of risk, you're going to pay a lot more uh, and not really understand it. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll start and go from there. Thank you very much for being with us. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and insurance advisor, Alicia Boehner. It's a special episode brought to you by Indiana Farmers Insurance. Thank you very much. We're focusing on things that you can do that are in your control to make sure you're paying the best rate possible for your home and auto insurance. So thank you very much, Indiana Farmers, for making this show possible. Also, if you've missed anything, Diane Bennett was on the program last week. Um, or if you've missed anything in today's program, you can catch up on this episode and any others a few different ways. Uh, you can first, my favorite way is YouTube channel. Just search Wise Money Show on YouTube. And then I'd encourage you to subscribe to that channel and even hit the bell there for, to receive notifications for all additional content that we post so that it, you'll be notified of it and you can, uh, you can get there. If you like this program, I'd encourage you to hit that thumbs up button as well. That helps us. So thank you very much. And then second way you can catch up on previous episodes is on the podcast. Once again, wherever you listen to podcasts, just search Wise Money Show. I'd encourage you to rate the show and even make comments or share episodes, if you will. Once again, just search Wise Money Show. All right, we're talking about the four four tips that are the four things that are in your control to make sure you're paying the least amount for your insurance. You first need to meet, you need to make sure you get the right coverage in place. But then after that, what things are in your control to make sure you're paying the least? First, make sure you've got a good credit score. Second, make sure you're getting all of the discounts possible, maximizing your discounts, okay? We just hit the third, and that is manage your driving record and your small claims. 
The last one, and I'm seeing this more and more. Kevin, you tell me if you're, if you're seeing this as well. Make sure you've got the right deductibles. Here's what I mean by that. Seeing more and more people come in for financial planning for the first time and looking for wise financial advice. And again, our specialty is that we look and say, well, there's six areas to your financial life. Let's make sure all six areas are working together. And when we're looking in present financial position, if you've got a fully funded emergency fund or even a lot of cash, if you've got a lot, if you've got a good budget, a lot of discretionary cash flow, then when we get to protection planning, if you have really low deductibles, you're just choosing to pay more for your home and auto insurance. If you've got a stable financial position, I know you don't want to have a high deductible because when there's a claim, you've got to pay more. I get that. But to have a low deductible, you're paying more for your insurance. That's right. You're, the $500 deductible is a base rate. So you're not going to pay more. You're not going to pay less. Mm -hmm. Anything that is over $500, you're typically going to save money because you are paying more up front. The insurance company is paying less. Anything that is under $500, typically um, you are going to pay more and um, the company then will. My, so, so my big thing is don't make this decision emotionally. Right. Most of us just look and say, well, if I have a claim, hmm, do I want to pay a lot or a little? A uh, little. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, of course. No, that's just based on emotion, though. Right. If you look at your entire financial situation, claims don't happen very frequently. What's your ability to manage a claim? If I really get on my soapbox, this is where I start seeing a divide and a shrinking middle class, potentially. If you don't have a stable financial situation, you really need to keep your deductibles low. By keeping your deductibles low, you're going to pay more for your insurance. So do the hard work to get a stable financial situation and then get rewarded for it by having higher deductibles. Yeah. So there again, work with your certified financial planner and your insurance agent to make sure that you've got the right amount. Yeah, the, the, that's the idea. Do you want to bet that you're going to have an accident? If you bet that you're going to have an accident, have a low deductible. The other thing is I tell people don't make insurance your first dollar of coverage. Right. So if you make your first dollar of coverage your cash reserve, that $1,000 deductible, that gives you an incentive to not have a claim. Because I have a, a good friend who's got plenty of resources and had three strange things happen. Um, their, their trampoline got caught up in a windstorm and landed on top of their house and wrecked their roof. Mm. And then they're, they're driving their car, they hit a deer. And then another just bizarre life happens kind of a thing. And all of a sudden, they said, hey, our insurance rates just got jacked. And we've we've tried to shop, and we can't go anywhere mm -hmm. because we've had three claims, and these were all legitimate claims. These are they're not making stuff up, right? right? It's not a slip and fall, uh, accident or anything like this. This is the the real stuff. So, and, mm. and again, it's that three to five year look back too. Yeah. So if you can avoid filing a small claim, then that will save that for maybe a bigger incidence that you might need to use it for. Okay, so those are the top four ways that you can control your insurance rate. So I would first tell you, if you want to find a way to get cheaper insurance, first look to see what can you do to improve your rate. What are some other ways? So those are our top four, but were there some other ways that you guys thought of that you can you can improve your rate? Plan ahead. Uh, if you purchase your insurance usually one to two weeks prior to when you actually need it to start, you will typically get a lower rate with a advanced, they call it advanced quote discount. So basically, again, data, last minute shoppers tend to have poor history compared to people That's who plan ahead. Really? Yes. So advanced quote is one thing that is, we're seeing almost all carriers offer that right now. What about paying your premium all at once? Yes. Annual. Pay in full annually. That's offered with almost all carriers. If you can't afford that in your budget, some people just can't do an auto withdrawal monthly. Because, again, less likely that the company is going to see that policy cancel. And they're thinking about administrative costs, too. So every time a policy cancels or is late, they have to send out paper notices. So that saves them money. So they pass some of those savings along to you. Yeah. And I would tell you, if you think you can't pay it 
annual and full, <clears throat> check out our discussions about the three bank account system because yep. that's the secret to paying less for your auto insurance by paying it all. Uh, and you can do a semi-annual in full, too. So, some of the companies will let you do a semi-annual payment and count it for paid in full, and some will not. depends on the carrier. Okay. Oh, for homeowner's insurance, a good one is pay off that mortgage. There's a mortgage-free discount with some of the companies. Um, really? With some of the companies, also another tip, some of the companies will offer a paid in full discount on the home if you are not escrowing. So when you're setting up your home loan, think about that. Depending upon your carrier, again, you might want to look at it before you – set that home loan into place to see if your carrier will offer that because it's the difference between you paying the premium and it being lumped into your mortgage every month. Then you can save a little money by you paying it yourself by paying in full instead mm -hmm. of the bank doing it. One of the things we were talking about over the break is another way to make sure you're, you're paying the best rate possible um, is to be working with an independent agent. And, you know, we're an independent agent, so I'm not, I'm not telling you this in this self-serving way, but this is why we became an independent agent so that we can shop around and represent multiple great companies to make sure you're getting the best deal. If you're working with an insurance agent who only offers one company or who says they're independent, but the only insurance company they offer as an independent agent is one company, <laughs> then you're not able to shop around and make sure that you're getting the very, very best deal. And people typically aren't familiar with how insurance companies work. Insurance companies, certain companies have an appetite for certain types of risk. So some insurance companies are great with youthful drivers. Other insurance companies price youthful drivers out of the market. Yep. Some, some insurance companies like senior drivers. Other insurance companies price senior drivers out of the market. So they've decided wh what is the sweet spot for that company and where do I want to operate? That's why it's it's likely that you want to work with an independent agent who's got more than one company to offer you because if you if you if you're working with someone who can only ever offer you one company, you you're, you're a nail and they are a hammer. Yeah. That's it. It's just whether you're a square peg going in the round hole or not, that's just how it's going to work. And then the, the, the last one here I'll sneak in, uh, and this one's a little, it's a, a little hard, but drive a car that's cheaper to insure. <laughs> that's right. So companies typically will assign a symbol to a vehicle, and that's based on things like how frequently are they stolen, reported as stolen, um, is it does it have a larger motor or engine or something like that? So four doors tend to be a little less expensive to insure than a two door. <laughs> four cylinder versus the V6, V8. Uh, anything that's a sport model, convertible, anything like that, it's going to typically cost more on all average. Right. Okay, that is all the time we have for today. On behalf of Alicia Boehner, Kevin Corhorn, myself, and all of us at Corhorn Financial Group, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. And if you are on the YouTube channel, please like the, the episode, subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll get notifications, and feel free to share the episode as well. Thank you very much. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Joint business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.